close your eyes, really close them, and think about a goal that you failed to accomplish. It can be anything from losing weight to taking over the world, no judgment either way. Now open your eyes. I had a goal once. In medical school, I wanted to learn how to deliver a baby safely before residency. You see, I was feeling insecure in my ability to deliver alone and very uncomfortable with the process in general. But I realized that it was an important skill to have in emergency medicine, so I really wanted to learn, which is how I found myself on the labor ward during my international rotation in Papua New Guinea. My first delivery came way too fast, and shortly after finishing the prenatal check, I found myself alone with the baby already crowning. I needed more time to figure out what to do, so I pushed my hands into the baby's head. <laughs> then I realized this probably wasn't going to help him get out. So I let my hands fly up, and I stepped away from the table. The baby came flying out, and we caught him right before he landed on the floor. Oops. <laughs> this story is the perfect example of when it's too late to quit. It's also the experience that not only taught me how to quit, but the power of quitting. Quitting has a number of negative connotations. Quitters are often seen as lazy, unsuccessful underachievers. The fact is, everybody quits, all of you. We just don't admit to it, because our society values hard work, perseverance, and success. But there is a secret positive side to quitting. For everything we stop doing, we gain back the time and energy we were losing on a dead-end process. <laughs> right? We gain the opportunity to pursue the goals that are worthwhile, which is why tonight I'm going to teach you how to be better quitters in three easy steps. <laughs> it's really easy, I swear. So step one is to identify the goals that are worthwhile. See? Easy. In order to decide what goals are worthwhile, you have to know why they're important to you and your life. I quit during that delivery because I forgot why I was there. Instead of trying to help that woman deliver a baby, I was just trying to get more time to figure out what to do. When I shifted my focus, I became overwhelmed by the, goal, the challenges involved in accomplishing my goals. The closer we get to accomplishing our goals, the harder it is to succeed. We enter an inverse learning curve where success seems impossible and failure seems inevitable. It's in the trough of the curve that we are maximizing our losses. So it's important to know why you're there to make sure it's worth it. If the goal you're pursuing isn't worth it, and most of them aren't, <laughs> it's true, the next step is to quit early. In fact, you should quit before you even start. <laughs> right? The problem is, most people wait until late in the process to quit when the challenges are overwhelming. There are consequences to waiting this long. You are maximizing your losses in the trough of the curve. And then we tend to mislabel those losses as an investment, and then we refuse to quit because we want to get a return on our investment. I quit during the worst possible time, in the middle of a delivery putting the health of the mother, the child, and my bank account at risk. <laughs> my goal was worth pursuing, because women will always have babies. But I couldn't continue to let those babies fall on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> my goal was worth pursuing, but I was pursuing it the wrong way. Which is why step three is being pragmatic in your approach to success by acknowledging your failures. It is humbling and embarrassing to fail. It's also critical to assess those failures for the mistakes that you made so you can improve on your next attempt. You don't have to be a doctor to know that you cannot deliver a baby by pushing it back inside. 
if that had been a multiple choice exam, I never would have picked that answer. <laughs> I swear. But I did. I just like that. In order to accomplish my goal, I had to acknowledge and learn from those mistakes. After each delivery, I would look at what I had done, read more about the process, and talk to people about how to improve. I refused to hold on to any strategy that was ineffective, even if it felt comfortable or seemed intuitive. I quit dozens of techniques until everything from my mindset to my body position was optimal. And it worked. Over the next two weeks, I delivered 15 more babies. Eight were by myself, two were twins, one was breech, and none fell on the floor. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Quitting can be a powerful tool if we choose to use it. We need to understand what goals are worthwhile so that we can quit early on the ones that aren't. We must be willing to acknowledge our failures and open to being pragmatic about our approach so that we can get back the time we're wasting on a dead-end process and instead be extraordinary in the goals that are worthwhile. So think back to that goal you failed to accomplish. Was it worth it? If not, what is? Mm.